There are a lot of agents struggling right now with the market being the way that it is, inventory being so tight. However, I believe it's never been easier to succeed and thrive as a real estate agent. I'm gonna break down exactly why I think the bar is set so freaking low. The bar to success in this industry is so damn low, you just have to do a few basic things consistently and you'll thrive. What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 286 of the Massive Agent Podcast. I am your host, Dustin Brome, here in Salt Lake City. I am fired the hell up because this weekend we're doing our very first Power Day live in person here in Salt Lake City, and it's going to be awesome. Uh, I mean, it's kind of an experiment, you know, for the the first group, but. I'm telling you what, we're already planning the second, the third, the fourth, and making it a regular thing. So stay tuned. We're going to be opening up registration for future Power Days uh, right after this weekend. But uh, this is going to be good. I mean, it's a workshop. It's a mastermind. It's us in a room working on your business together for one day. And the night before, we're having a nice little pre-event networking dinner kind of thing at my house. And that's going to be fun. So... Uh, I'm just kind of right in the middle of it right now as I'm recording this, getting the finishing touches, all the you know all the last pieces put in there, and uh, my wife is helping out a lot with that. She's amazing. Uh, I mean, she puts up with me, so she's a saint already. But I'm just fired up. All right, I've been talking a lot over the last week with a lot of very high-producing agents, team leaders, and um, and broker owners, and I'm noticing a common theme. Now, look, it, here's the thing with real estate. Every single one of us has the same conditions. So when you, if you're in your market and inventory's tight and you're like, oh my God, people aren't selling their houses, then you look and there's, there's literally agents in the same market with the same conditions that you're dealing with that are selling twice as many homes as they did last year. And you're sitting there complaining about how hard it is. I'm not saying it's not more difficult. It can be, and it is in a lot of ways. However... There are certain things, certain basics that agents across the board are just not freaking doing. And when you do these things, these basic things consistently over time, you will thrive. It's, it's just becoming apparent to me how many agents are not consistent with doing the right things. You are consistent for a period of time, a month, six months, whatever. But let me back up. Okay, because I could go on this whole rant and just start the episode right freaking here. Uh, let me back up and gather my thoughts for a minute and uh, and lay the proper foundation. So before we do that, I've got to give a shout out to BAMX. BAMX doesn't just tell you what to do. They show you how to do it. They, they break it all down. For as little as $10 a month, you can get uh, courses and education on stuff like, you know, viral green screen videos, Instagram marketing from the broke agent himself, objection handling from Tom Tool, uh, Canva, Master Canva, uh, all these different courses available through BAMX. Use the code MASSIVE to get 10% off uh, your membership for, like I said, as little as 10 bucks a month. It's ridiculous. All you need to do to get more information about BAMX from BAM, from Broke Agent Media, go to massiveagentpodcast.com slash BAMX and check it out. Um, like I said, this weekend, Power Day is coming we have, as of the time I'm recording this, two or three spots available. Uh, if you happen to hear this Thursday and you still want to come, go to PowerDayEvent.com. And if there's still a spot available, it'll let you grab one. If not, stay tuned because I'm thinking of opening up registration for the next Power Day in August. I just haven't decided. Early August, late August, I don't know. I know that's kind of a crazy time with kids going back to school, usually in the middle, middle to late August and, and all of that. But I also don't want to wait till September. So I want to get these going because, damn it, agents need help. You need a hand up, you need focus, and you need a lot of work on your mindset. You need a lot of work on what's going on be uh, between your ears. That's the biggest issue that I see with agents. The biggest reason why agents are struggling is their mindset is jacked up. It's full of limiting beliefs, full of self-doubt. There's no desire there or you're desiring the wrong things. You're, you're, so many things. So many things. And this is why we have to get in a room and work on them together in person. So there's that. And then uh, I mentioned last week, our AI course is coming soon. I'm going to have a registration page to pre-register for, for that AI course. Um, 
I'm really spending a lot of time diving into AI on not just like what it can do theoretically, but like how you can use it as a real estate agent to accomplish more, to be seen more, to get more exposure, to talk to more clients, to basically have a whole army working for you that you're not paying. So it's not like it's costing you a lot of extra money to have a, a workforce of 10 people. You just have AI tools doing all of this for you and you're getting so much more done. So you could work more and accomplish more, or you could just kind of produce the same amount and take a step back and enjoy your life. You know, depending on where you're at and what you want to do, AI can do that for you right now. It's crazy how fast these things are moving. So the AI course is coming. Stay tuned for that. Let, like I said, let, let me back up with this. All right. So I, I've been earlier today, I was on a, uh, a mastermind okay, with, within my EXP organization. And there, there's a bunch of really high level team leaders and, and solo agents that are, you know, selling a couple hundred houses a year and all of that. And the theme was this, and I've known this for a while, ever since, like I've known this for years and years. You guys all know this too. But when I heard the topics of discussion today, I'm like, damn it, this has to be the podcast today. Everyone was sharing war stories, so to speak, about how, so first off, there was one agent sharing how difficult it was for them to get offers accepted. And, and I don't doubt that that's the case. However, one thing most agents are not doing, most agents are not doing consistently anyways, is following up on your damn offer. This is one of those basic, most fundamental things. When you submit an offer on a property, follow up on it. First off, you should make sure it was actually received, kind of intelligent to do, right? Make sure that it was actually received because technology, you know, sometimes shit happens and an email doesn't go through or you forget to attach it or it just doesn't get sent, it gets stuck in your outgoing, whatever. Make sure the damn offer was received and then wouldn't it make sense as a buyer's agent to reach out to the listing agent and find out what the hell the seller's needs are. Pretty basic, right? I was stunned at how many of these super high level team leaders that, that have you know, 10, 20, 50 agents on their teams all say that most of the time, like 80, 90% of the time, offers are just not followed up on. And if they're followed up on, it's just an email, confirm receipt, okay? And th that's better than nothing, but you get 20 offers on a property, you'll get one or two calls as the listing agent actually inquiring about what the seller needs. Here's another, tr an, another bit of information for you. How many offers do you think get accepted when they're not followed up on? How many, how many buyer's agents get their offers accepted when they don't follow up on those offers, when they don't take the time to reach out and ask what the seller's needs are and have some communication, some conversation with the listing agent? How many times do you think those offers get accepted? Basically zero, basically zero. So let's flip this on, it, on its head then. If the bar is so low here, if you're struggling as a buyer's agent to get offers accepted, for the love of God, make sure before you start bitching about market conditions that you are actually communicating with every single listing agent that you submit an offer on. It doesn't guarantee that you're going to get that because you could communicate and be friendly and likable and all that stuff, but then you still can't pay what they need and someone else will. Okay. But over time, if you follow up, if you speak to the listing agent, if you ask what the seller's needs are, and then, and then your client does their best to meet those needs, over the long run, you're going to get so many more deals accepted than not. I don't know what else to say. It's stunning how few of you are doing this. You listening may, may be like, well, I do this. Well, do you do it every time? Are you going to be doing it every single time three years from now still? Or are you going to get jaded and, and kind of beat up and, and down in the dumps because not every offer gets accepted? Not every fucking offer is going to get accepted. That's not how it works. I don't care who you are as an agent. Literally, if there is such thing as the best real estate agent, whatever that looks like, let's say there is the best real estate agent, even the best real estate agent cannot get every offer accepted. It's not possible. So get over the fact that you're not getting them all accepted. No shit. But if you're getting eight out of 10, seven out of 10, even five out of 10, how awesome is that? You know, for every, for every, if you want to get a house under contract, make two offers. If you want to get five houses under contract, make 10 offers. If you're getting five out of 10, that's pretty damn good. 
So I don't know what the numbers are for you. I don't know what good looks like for you, but hopefully you get the point. Make sure at a minimum before you start blaming the market, blaming an asshole listing agent, blaming whatever, make sure that you're doing everything in your power and that you're taking responsibility for your damn business and your damn clients. Because if you're not, you have no one to blame but yourself. At a minimum, no one else is doing the shit. The bar is set so low, the bar to success as the bar to success as an agent is set so damn low that you just have to do some basic minimum things over time and then you do those things and you're just going to win. Very simple. Okay, Let, let's talk about when it comes to attracting clients. How many times have you personally said the leads are bad? I know I used to say this. I used to blame the leads. What, I, what was really happening, what, it wasn't that the leads were bad, it's that my expectations were. My expectations were that somehow I would run ads and people would just be waiting to buy a house right that day. That's not how it works, is it? Now, every once in a while that can happen, especially if it's Google ads versus Facebook, because Google people are actually searching for an agent. They're actually seeking you out when they see your ad. Facebook and TikTok and ads like that, you're interrupting them with content in their feed, so they're not actively searching for you. There's a big difference there between the different types of ads on the platform. But if you are saying that the leads are bad, it's just because your, ex your expectations are. You're expecting them to close. You're expecting them the first time you reach out to say, okay, let's go see houses or I'm ready to make an offer or damn it, let's list my house tonight. Don't even bother coming over. Let's just sign the listing agreement. Ridiculous, right? Well, I know I'm saying these things somewhat sarcastically, but if, you, if you're being honest, these are kind of the things that you're expecting they're just not rational. So you are, you're sabotaging yourself by setting these unrealistic expectations. So if you're saying the leads are bad, I don't like these leads. Well, let's talk about your follow-up. Is it that the leads suck or do you? Does your follow-up suck? Because I bet it's the leads aren't bad. It's just you aren't following up for long enough. Those leads might be great, but they might not be ready to go for a year and a half. Those leads that you're getting from Facebook ads may not be ready to go for two years. So if you give up after three tries, no wonder you say the leads are bad. But in reality, you are because you're not doing the work. You haven't put the systems in place to follow up with them for years. You don't have anything in place to, first off, you don't, you don't even understand that they're not going to be ready for two years. If you're running ads, some of them will, will, will close sooner. Most of them will close, you know, months from now and even more will close later, like a year, two years down the road. I, I closed a couple houses that, uh, they were Facebook leads three years prior. I love those leads because it, it, I was proud of myself for, for following up for that damn long. If I'm being honest, it was so rewarding three years later to be like, holy shit, I wrote these people off, but I stayed in touch. They were on my newsletter. They stayed on my drip campaign. There was the occasional follow-up and they saw my content. You know, don't forget that your content keeps people engaged. When you are visible online, that is also follow-up. Your content that you do is prospecting. You realize that, right? It's amazing how many agents don't realize that. Content is prospecting. It also does the follow-up for you when they're following you and, and you know, you're reaching the right people with retargeting and all of that. So don't blame the leads, blame your lack of follow-up because that's really what it is. Your expectations are all fucked up and you thought that they would close a lot faster. And when they didn't, you kind of just gave up. Had you just kept going, they would have listed with you, but they weren't ready. So make sure that when you, when you're running any kind of lead gen at all, you have drip campaigns, you have follow-up set up, for like five years, like once they go into your, your uh, drip campaign, that sucker better go for like five years because you have no idea how long it's going to take them. You don't know when they're going to be ready. They may have been on your website looking for a list of homes with a swimming pool and a two car garage on the East side, but they're just thinking, okay, five years from now, once, you know, once I get married, once we have kids or once I get this job or once I move, once they actually move to your city, I want to know. I want to know what it looks like. They're not ready right now, but you think that just because they filled out your lead form that 
they're ready to go right now. And if they don't respond within three tries or five tries, that they're just, that it's just a bad lead. You're just bad at follow-up. Don't know what else to say. Again, the bar is set so low. You do some basic things consistently over time, you will thrive. This is what the top producers do. They're not magical. They don't have magical tongues and magical scripts and magical whatever. They just do the things that you're not willing to do longer than you. That's what top producers do. They do the things you're not willing to do longer than you. And because they do it longer than you, they get better at them than you. And, and then that snowballs. You're, you're letting the snowball go and then you're just, eh, you give up. They keep rolling theirs. They keep building theirs. There's no reason you can't be the same. It's just a matter of consistency and just toughing it out. It's not, it's not even that tough. Each individual thing is not that difficult. We just overcomplicate it because we add emotion on top. We add financial pressure on top. We add expectations because we see these people on social media that are selling so many houses. Oh my God, I must be such a fucking failure because this person sold the $40 million house and I'm only selling a $400,000 house. What an asshole I am, right? No, no, you're being way too damn hard on yourself. Let me show you one more example of where the bar is so low, yet you're not willing to jump over it, okay? Content, content. You're like, oh, it's really hard. You know, nobody's hiring me. It's so hard to, to get people to hire me. How visible are you? How visible are you? Do you stand out? I mean, are you memorable or are you forgettable? If you're wondering why your past clients aren't hiring you, are you memorable or forgettable? If you stayed in front of your past clients more consistently, and I don't mean calling them every week. I don't mean texting them twice a month. You could do that, but that also at some point just gets weird and annoying. So at a certain point, stop that. But if they just keep seeing you every single place they go, your content's always in front of them. Your email is in their inbox once, twice, three, four times a month, whatever, however often you send it. They see your videos. They see your ads. They see this. They can't forget about you. So when the time comes for them to refer an agent, if they remember you, they will. But chances are, if you're not getting referrals from past clients, it's not necessarily that they didn't like you or that they thought you did a shit job. It's probably they forgot about you. It's because you haven't been willing to do enough video, to put enough content out there, to run enough ads, to do retargeting. These are basic things that are not super complicated and not super difficult to do. They take a commitment of time. They take a commitment of effort and to a certain extent, a commitment of you don't have to make a financial investment to do this shit, but it's not like you have to spend 20 grand a month to do it. You could have a budget for less than a thousand dollars a month, less than $500 a month and still accomplish a lot of this stuff and really high quality shit. You're just choosing not to, you're just prioritizing incorrectly. You're doing other things. You're doing busy work. You're doing things that should be outsourced to a virtual assistant or even not done at all. There's some things you think you have to do that you don't, but then you're not doing the stuff that actually moves the needle. Video and content is prospecting. So if you're not doing videos and you're not posting them consistently and you're not putting out content, that means literally you're not prospecting. You got to flip that in your head. So many agents that I speak to see video as like some separate thing and prospecting is getting on the phone and dialing for dollars. Maybe that's what it looks like for you, but what if your dialing for dollars is recording for dollars and you just hit the little red button on your phone and you say some good shit and you post it on the internet and then you do it again tomorrow and then you do it again the next day and pretty soon people see you and hire you. People you don't even know are seeing and hiring you, but they just do because that's how it works. You realize that every view count, like when you see that 762 people watched your video, you realize those are people. Those are actual people. So you're saying, oh, this video didn't go viral. It only got 167 views. Imagine that you were on stage in a room with 167 people watching you. Is that an insignificant group of people? Is that a small group? Is that meaningless? Is your message worthless to that 167 people in the room? Of course not. But again, 
our expectations get fucked up because you think you have to have a million views or a hundred thousand views on a video or else it's worthless. There are many, many, many agents on my team and that I'm connected with and that are in the society who get hundreds, like low hundreds of views on videos, but they get multiple deals from them. There's, there's agents within our group that are, that have less than 200 YouTube subscri subscribers and they're getting multiple closings per month from YouTube. Interesting because they understand that video is prospecting. So sure. You could do the, the cold calls. You could, you could call dial for dollars, all that stuff. That's not bad. Awesome. But what if, if you want to do that, great. But what if you also record for dollars? Just a thought. When you're not doing content, you're not prospecting. Not to the extent that you could and not to the extent that you should. So again, the bar is set so low here. These are not super complicated things. You don't have to have an IQ of 180 to do this shit. Obviously, I've done 286 straight fucking podcast episodes, five and a half years straight every single week. I'm no rocket scientist, but I am someone that decided one day that I'm going to do it. I didn't put an end date on it. I just said, I'm going to do this every week. I didn't, honestly, I don't think I even thought five years into the future. I just thought of this week and next. That was it. And then I just kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And here we are, 286 episodes. And now you somehow found me and are listening to the show. How amazing is that? We probably don't know each other. We probably never met, but you're, you're watching this or you're listening to this. You're learning from it all because I decided five and a half years ago to just start talking to the internet consistently. And I never gave up. I'm not the smartest guy out there. And I, and honestly, when I started, I was not even confident. I built confidence over time and I still have a lot. I still have a long way to go. I consider myself pretty damn confident, especially in front of the camera on stage. I'm confident all of that, but there's a lot of areas in my life where I'm not or I, I'm, I'm at least not nearly as confident, secure as I should be. It's a work in progress. You want to build confidence, do the thing that's going to build the confidence. You want to get confident in front of the camera, record a bunch of videos. You want to become a better communicator, talk a lot. There's no way around this shit. This is basic stuff you guys have full control over. You are responsible for your career. Here's the thing, okay? I'm about to jump all over your damn toes. Whatever your career looks like right now, whatever your life looks like as a whole, you built it. Everything that you have in your life right now is a result of your previous actions and your previous thoughts for better or worse. Now, you may have an amazing family, an amazing spouse, kids, great relationships, but you struggle with business and money. Okay, so do I. You heard on, on the episode th three weeks ago with Cody Sperber. What the easy part for him was money and business where he struggled was relationships and family. That was his weakness. Could be worse, right? I really hope that this reached the people that it was supposed to reach this week. S please let me know if you heard this episode, if you really heard this episode, let me know, shoot me a, a DM on Instagram at massive agent. Let me know that. Let me know if this episode spoke to you or not, because I, I don't know. I just kind of let loose and I, I know that it's meant to reach the people that it's supposed to reach. And I hope that that's you. Thank you for listening. Go do the work because as you know, this is not rocket science. If you do some basic things consistently over time and you just decide, damn it, I'm going to fucking do it and not stop, which means you're going to get better over time. And pretty soon you're going to build confidence because you did the hard thing. Confidence is built by doing hard shit. You're not, you, you can't wait until you have confidence to do the hard thing. You have to do the hard thing to build the confidence. Go do it. Thanks for listening. See you guys.